Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Riley, an associate of the Cruise Lecturers Association, and I would like to give you a brief overview of my portfolio of cruise ship talks. But first, a little about myself. I'm a graduate from Manchester University, where I studied chemistry, together with geology and biochemistry. After six years at Manchester, I spent two years as a research fellow at Sussex University, before moving into industry with Unilever in London. For the past 12 years, my wife and I have enjoyed cruising and have visited most parts of the world with many different cruise lines. My portfolio of talks fall into two groups, one reflecting my career with Unilever and the other my general interests, gemstones and astronomy. My career with Unilever began in their personal products group, later moving to the raw materials sourcing group. This gave me an insight into products that we pick up and use every day without really thinking much about them. It also gave me the chance to visit and work in many countries around the world. My first series of talks begins with a little history of Unilever, how a grocer from Bolton grew his business into a multinational company on the back of a bar of soap. William Hesketh Lever was that grocer and with his brother they built and developed the business, built a factory at Port Sunlight and a village to house their workers. The Port Sunlight village is now a heritage trust area reflecting its importance in British industrial history. It is a fascinating village to visit with tea rooms, gardens, a museum and the Lady Lever Art Gallery. Let's now take a look at some everyday products that we often take for granted. Using early adverts and video clips, we will explore a little of their history. Lever built his empire on soap, so it's a good place to begin. Sunlight Soap was his first product, with which he created the concept of packaging, branding and advertising. Shortly after this came Lifebuoy Soap. This was the first medicated soap with its iconic image of a lifeboat man. This image represented the soap saving poor Victorian families and their children from the dirt and disease that was rife at the time. Then came the washing powders Lux and Purcell. If Lever couldn't beat the opposition, he bought them. And this included Pear Soap and Hudson Soap. How many of us remember the Miss Pears competition? Much later, Lever's empires grew to include many other everyday products, including tea, frozen foods, sausages and ice cream. Tea has a fascinating history from its origin in China, through the Opium Wars, the Boston Tea Party and to the clipper ships that brought the tea back to Britain. Later, problems in China resulted in tea being grown in India. Catherine of Braganza is credited with the introduction of tea drinking into England and the Duchess of Bedford is remembered for introducing afternoon tea. Finally, we will take a look at the invention of the teacup and tea bag, the history of some of the major tea brands, including Brookbond, Lipton, Typhoo and Tetley. If you're not a great fan of tea, no problem, we can take a look at the history of coffee. First discovered by a young goat herder, it had a turbulent history before the development of some of the major brands like Maxwell House, which took its name from the hotel where it was first served. If tea or coffee is not your forte, then we can explore the history of the fizzy drinks business, which can be traced back to an experiment performed by Joseph Priestley in 1767. This was the catalyst for the development of the now famous brands of Schweppes, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, 7-Up and Dr Pepper. How many of us remember the Birdseye brand of frozen foods? Clarence Birdseye founded the frozen foods business after watching the Inuits freeze fish. And, as they say, the rest is history. Captain Birdseye was a popular advertising figure for frozen fish fingers and Patsy Kensit for frozen peas. 
Talking of memorable adverts, we all remember the late Linda Bellingham and the Oxo family, and we can take a look at the history of this humble stock cube. Whilst on the topic of food, we can also explore how wall sausages evolved into an ice cream business with the brands Cornetto and Magnum. Next, primarily for the ladies, but maybe there will be some men in the audience, we have a series of talks looking at the history of cosmetics and perfumes. This series of talks charts the turbulent rise of the cosmetics industry. Often seen as the devil's invention, makeup had its origins in ancient Egypt, later becoming popular in Venice, France and England, particularly with Elizabeth I. However, many of the early ingredients were toxic, and for some early young fashion icons, it was really a makeup to die for. A much publicised opponent of makeup was Queen Victoria. She was not amused. In their kitchen, Tom Law Williams sat and watched his sister make mascara from Sutton Vaseline. He thought he could do better. His sister was named Mabel. He went on to set up the Maybelline Company. There was an unusual use of mascara. Warris Carruthers had invented nylon. However, with wartime restrictions in nylon stockings, ladies used mascara to draw a pencil line on the back of their legs to imitate them. Lipstick had an up and down history, often seen fit for use by actresses and prostitutes. However, with the advent of the film industry and screen actresses such as Clara Bow wearing heavy makeup, its use rose dramatically. It was commercialised by Helen Rubinstein, Max Factor and Elizabeth Arden. The invention of the push-up lipstick tube made it much easier for women to use and carry in their handbags. Moving on to perfumes, Coco Chanel was obsessed with number five. Not surprisingly, her first perfume was Chanel number no. five. Marilyn Monroe said, just a few drops of Chanel number no. five when asked what she wore in bed. The Avon Company had its roots in the Californian Perfume Company in the USA, but its creator loved Shakespeare's birthplace, Stratford on Avon, and so the change in name. Esther Lauder became famous with Youth Dew and Elizabeth Arden with Blue Grass. The iconic Cologne 4711 takes its name from the house number where it was created. For the males in the audience, the iconic aftershave was Old Spice, named after the family's spice jug. There are a couple of other products that we use daily, but perhaps we don't think of them as cosmetics. These are deodorants and the tube of toothpaste. Deodorants have a long and amusing history. Way back in history, people believed that men's armpits smelt like a goat. Mum was one of the first deodorants, and Right Guard, the first aerosol product. Did you know that deodorants are evaluated by female armpit sniffers? Once a taboo subject, female armpits could now be talked about and even exposed with sleeveless dresses. Women's skin became more exposed, particularly with Coco Chanel returning from holiday with a suntan. The stage was now set for the introduction of the bikini. So what about the humble toothpaste? The Egyptian Hesse Ray was the first dentist and early ideas about tooth decay invoked a worm that lived inside the tooth. Later Pierre Fachard, the great French dentist, recommended urine as a mouthwash as a remedy for tooth decay. How many of us remember the colourful Gibbs tins? Pepstan toothpaste. Gibbs SR, Britain's first TV advert, and Singel, the world's first striped toothpaste. Moving on to astronomy, looking up at a clear night sky, we have all at some time wondered how did it all begin and how will it end? With wonderful images and video clips from NASA and the International Space Station, this series of talks traces the current ideas on the origin, evolution and fate of the Earth and the universe. I begin with our place in the universe. How did the early astronomers, together with the invention of the telescope, begin to understand planet Earth's position in the universe? Next, how did it all begin? The history of the Big Bang, the origin of the universe, and how all the elements responsible for life and the world we live in were formed. Following this, we have the solar system, a grand visual tour of our solar system Again with images from NASA, the International Space Station, the Voyager missions and the Hubble telescope. And on to keeping us safe. How Earth evolved to support life. 
Earth is just in the right position to nurture life, the Goldilocks zone, not too hot and not too cold. Then a simple look at some of the more exotic structures that astronomers have found in our universe, white dwarfs, neutron stars, pulsars and black holes. And finally we must include the Northern Lights, the history and origins of this beautiful natural light display seen close to the North and South Poles with images taken from the International Space Station. Our new talk added to my portfolio is exclusively about Norway's myths and fjords, including trolls, national gemstones and the scenic waterfalls of the fjords. Next is a series of talks on gemstones. We will look at how the common and uncommon gemstones are produced in the earth before they are cut and polished. Following on from this, we will discuss some of the more famous gems and the stories behind them. Finally, a series of festive talks tracing the origins of our Christmas traditions. First, Christmas itself, the traditions of holly, ivy, Christmas lights, and of course, how Queen Victoria and Albert popularised Christmas trees and the giving of presents. Both the Christmas cracker and the Christmas card were British inventions. We will take a look at Christmas food, the history of the turkey, sprouts, mince pies and the Christmas cake. Of course no Christmas talk would be complete without Father Christmas, Rudolph, the reindeers and carols. Thank you and I hope to have the opportunity of giving these talks on many cruise ships. <laughs>